President Biden desperately wants you to think his sputtering economy is doing well. The president rolling out a plan to spin sky-high inflation and gas prices that keep setting new records. Biden holding a rare Oval Office meeting this afternoon with Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. And Biden sharing his plan to fight inflation in a Wall Street Journal op-ed. Biden's goal appears to be to convince upset voters that things aren't that bad and try to pass the inflation blame on to Republicans. The president claims to know what he is doing, but one of his top advisors is refusing to answer simple questions. To give us a forecast, where can you have gas prices, let's, let's say by the end of the year, where will they be? This is a serious issue. And what you're doing right now is trying to put me in the position of being a forecaster. What is your ability to control those prices and bring them down? What you want from your president is that they're doing everything they can. <laughs> Curious, Sandra, I must tell you that I watched that back and forth. He refused to give you an answer. He couldn't give you an answer. What was your take on it? I felt those were really fair questions, not simple um, solutions, certainly not, but he didn't offer specific answers what they're doing to bring these prices down. I, I had very specific questions about why they're, why they're touting uh, this economy as, as in some position of strength when people are paying record high gas prices, $4.62 is the new record high today. Inflation is at a 40-year high in this country. And I also asked him, is this White House merely reacting to what is happening with the American economy, are they trying to get ahead of things getting even worse from here? You've had Larry Summers, Steve Ratner, all economists inside Democratic administrations who have been raising the flag, the red flag, on what is happening with this economy for quite some time, and there's nowhere to run and hide now. The Washington Post literally just published this piece on the misjudgment of this White House, of the inflation threat, until it was too late. And it goes date by date, which the Biden administration was playing down, uh, what, playing down the economic consequences of their policies. Uh, going back to July 19th, you remember all the talk about the inflation being transitory. transitory yes. And then it, was, it, then it was shifting the blames to the companies, mm -hmm. right? Then it was shifting the blame to Vladimir Putin invading Ukraine. Um, so. I was just trying to hold the White House accountable. We gave them a lot of time to explain mm -hmm. their, their plan, and unfortunately, we didn't really get it. All right, Jesse. Uh, you know, Sandra, I saw her. She, she said, well, you said inflation was transitory. I mean, why can't you give us an idea? Actually, they even met today with Powell as inflation is dogging the economy. And they keep insisting that the economy is better than we think it is. Like, don't believe your lying eyes. Yeah. <laughs> the economy's great. Wake up, surf. I mean, 75% of the country says the country is in an absolute you-know-what hole. And Biden's telling the people that are struggling, you don't know how good you have it. He says he's pivoting to the economy. What else has he been working on? God. And then he says, you know what? All the bad things about the economy, none of it's my fault. It's someone else's fault. It's the Fed chair's fault who missed inflation. But Biden just reappointed the Fed chair. And he says it's Congress's fault, too. But the Democrats control Congress. And then he says it's Putin's fault, but this gas price thing was going up way before he invaded, and he invaded on his watch. And then he says this. He goes, you know what? My solution? Spend more money. Mm. I mean, any, any idiot knows that that's a really dumb idea. He's got a lot of political problems. Black Americans, they're upset in the White House. They're very angry. And they, a lot of the black voters say, what have you done for me lately? We put you in there, and you haven't delivered. Same with the far left. The far left put him in there. He hasn't delivered on the Green New Dealio or anything like that. And all of his donors are angry, too. And I saw polls that come out say he's at 35% in Delaware. Even, his home yeah, state wow. hates him. He's at 29% in Ohio. He's got a Senate race in Ohio. He's in the 30s in Nevada and Georgia and Arizona. How's he going to win Senate races when he's doing that badly? Well, and his Wayne thing, Ultra MAGA, backfired. They're printed up T-shirts that yep. say Ultra MAGA. And the country's teetering on a recession now. No good for smoking Joe. Well, you know, Jessica, what do you think the plan is? I mean, there are some bright people in the White House. I mean, they've got, there's got to be a plan. They keep telling us we have a plan. It's no longer transitory. We're going to fix this. Things are great. Tell me how great things are. No, I, I don't want to do that. But I want to try to explain what's going okay. on here. No one goes into an election saying our, our campaign strategy is say everything is crappy. 
That's a bad idea. No Republican would do that. No Democrat is going to do that. And there have been a number of focus groups, and these came out right before the Pennsylvania election, where John Fetterman wiped the floor with Connor Lamb, who was the electable candidate, that said Democrats want a fighter. And we overwhelmingly believe that Republicans are always ready to go to the mat and that we cede too much ground. And I think what Joe Biden is doing here is to go a bit on the offensive and to also highlight, which a bunch of his surrogates have been doing, the fact that Republicans, except for Rick Scott's plan, which they're running away Away from aren't really offering up much of an alternative and then coupling that with big social issues that are going on right now like guns and the leaked SCOTUS opinion that there are Democratic voters and independent voters and even maybe some moderate Republican voters that can be animated by these issues where frankly Republicans are completely out of step with the American zeitgeist. So what's the White House plan to bring down gas prices? To bring down <laughs> gas? Well it wasn't about gas Prices. This was his inflation plan, and he well, was talking that's about it. Part of it. Well, it's he has. I think he has a gas plan, which was that he did authorize more drilling, but he has. Well, said he that released really? gas from the petroleum reserve, and, and the gas prices went up. I. That was the plan. Yeah, he released more. He said they could do more drilling, and then he pulled back on it. I don't think that that's right. I, he I mean, begged OPEC vote. to increase production, and they said, screw yeah, you. Yeah, then the All right, everything's there. crappy. Everyone vote Republican. <laughs> what do you want from Finally. Finally. But, but, but Greg, Greg isn't, isn't, isn't it important that a president at least feel the pain that the American people are feeling? I, I, you know, Jessica's saying he can't say everything's crappy. At least he can empathize. Oh. Isn't that supposed to be a strong point? If he could point? feel the pain, he would be a pure, uh, what do you call it, masoch masochist? Because he's creating the pain. Right. Mm. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's like uh, he says he wants to speak for himself, but that seems like that's been the problem since the beginning. He creates a word salad that would give you E. coli. To you, you know, the oh thing God. is, people are animated by issues like abortion and guns, but everyone is animated by inflation because there are some people that abortion will never enter their lives, right? And, but inflation hits them wherever they are. And that, I think that's the, that's the issue. If you don't have a solution for that, I, I'm looking at like, I believe that the Democrats have given up. They're like, they're like behind five touchdowns and they're choosing to run out the clock because clearly there's no political road back here for Joe. There's no comeback. So rather than even help a little, they're just leaving the field. I get that, that sense. Is that a sports analogy? It was a sports analogy, and I'm not even sure it made any sense to me, because frankly, it was a long weekend, and I'm working on about 10% of my brain. <laughs> you didn't get permission to do the analogies. So I don't. I on. come up with the analogies. <laughs> I don't yes. ask for, oh, for permission. Uh, yes. Yes. Are you done? Not really. Up next, criminals <laughs> ending a long holiday weekend by causing anarchy in Democrat-run cities. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.